I'm Dan Delaney. I'm the coordinator for the uh, Stream Restoration Alliance of the Middle Road. And I'm also the project manager for this project, which is the Jones Creek Channel Restoration Project. Uh, the channel in Jones Creek has uh, downcut about five feet uh, at two culvert sites. And our objective is to restore the channel grade. So let's get started. We're at the work site. Um, the in-stream work is going to start tomorrow, but we have the materials here, and uh, let's take a look at the materials. The zero to three-quarter inch material, it's going to make up 22% of our stream mix. And if you can look here, it's got clay, silt, sand, coarse sand, and small rock up to three-quarters of an inch. All of these, we have three piles here of materials. They'll be mixed here on site before they're taken to the channel. We're not going to attempt to try to mix them in the channel. Okay, this pile here is the next size larger. It is um, uh, one inch to six inches. And as you can see, you know, the bigger pieces here are six inches, but we've got a lot of two inch and four inch and one inch rock. Okay, this is the, uh, the, the six inch to 18 inch material that we have. And it, it's gonna be 20% uh, of the total mix. <clears throat> and this is by volume. Okay, so as you can see, again, we have a variation of all those sizes um, within that category. So the largest rocks here are approximately 18 inches, and they they, uh, they go down to, to you know this size right here, which is approximately six inches. This is going to be 35 percent of our total mix. These are the 18 to 36 inch category rock, and we will use these as shadow rock and to um, add channel roughness to the channel. The existing channel, as you'll see tomorrow when we actually do the in-stream work, is made up of very small materials, uh, one to two inches. And uh, that's why it, it uh, eroded away, uh, in addition to the culverts being undersized and creating too much velocity. So we're gonna use these to help slow the uh, velocity to dissipate the stream energy. Some of these will be used as footers on our shadow rock. And uh, most of our shadow rock will have footers underneath them so that they don't move. That's our objective. Give you some idea of the actual work site. We have about a two foot drop. Right here, goes into about a three and a half foot punch pool. Now the design for this project We'll recreate the channel as it was prior to when the culvert was built. So we will actually upgrade the channel clear up to the width of this culvert. So this punch pool will no longer be here and uh, it will produce a grade about three and a half to four percent grade over a 170 foot reach. Uh, this is a view inside of the culvert looking downstream just to give you some idea of a uh, before photo and we'll, uh, we'll retake this after we've uh, completed the channel work. Hi, I'm Alicia. I'm the riparian specialist and this is a pretty typical uh, portion of our site on Jones Creek. We've got steep banks and a lot of blackberry cover. Uh, and uh, we have some mature trees, um, but part of the project is going to be reshaping the banks where we can and reestablishing native trees and shrubs. We're here at the uh, Spalding Culvert. The uh, copper dam has been installed. It's uh, made out of clay. It's uh, pretty darn watertight. And we have a uh, pump that's pumping the water around our work area. Uh, this pump will be shut off at night and uh, the creek will be allowed to flow uh, through that pipe uh, and uh, flow all night and then we will uh, start it up again in the morning. 
we're going to start salvage operations as soon as uh, the water clears. Should be about uh, 20 minutes. We have the um, the stream is dried up now. We're bringing in some big boulders and stuff to fill the jump pool, and then we'll be mixing stream bed mix in with these boulders. Um, we want to make sure that we've got the entire edge of this pool uh, armored pretty pretty well. This is a view of the uh, what used to be the jump pool, looking down on it from above. The boulders that you see here are about four feet in diameter. When we're done, they're going to be around four to five feet apart, and uh, we're going to have them about twenty. The, to the tops of these boulders will be about. 20 inches above the uh, existing, not the existing, the new stream bed elevation. We're infilling between the boulders with uh, stream bed mix. Okay, we're uh, starting to fill up the jump pool here. We're placing our uh, shadow rock and uh, making sure that they're all on footers or three to four feet in diameter. And uh, pretty soon here, we're going to stop, bring in fines, put the fines down, and then water set those fines in between all of those rocks. Okay, this uh, shows us with the, the water gun, it's a water jet, high pressure hose. We use this to, uh, to uh, prove that we have a seal. Let's wash the fines in between all the rocks. And when the water comes to the surface like that, that shows that a seal has been achieved. And um, we do that in layers as we go. This is a view of uh, placing a footer rock. This rock is about four feet in length, about two feet in width. We uh, placed it so the flat side is up, and then we will place a shadow rock on top of the footer. This is the afternoon of the fourth day. Uh, we finished the first site, which is the Spalding Culvert. And uh, I'm standing inside the culvert looking downstream just so you get a view of it. And um, we ended up with an average of about 3.8% grade. And I'm just gonna walk down the channel here a little bit and let you get a view of the roughness of the channel. We actually started out with a three and a half percent grade coming out of the culvert because we were going into this curve and then we went a little steeper after we made the curve because the channel opened up and uh, just had a few more options. We uh, released the coffer dam about two hours ago and as you can see I would say all of the stream flow is on top of the surface so we had a really good seal. This is the mouth of the uh, railroad culvert. This is our first day of construction. We will be installing a dam, copper dam, and uh, diverting the water around, salvaging fish, and then we will get started filling in the channel. This is the uh, out outlet of the railroad culvert. The copper dam is installed. We're pumping water out of Jones Creek. The channel is now dry. Um, the fish have been salvaged out of the jump pool. And uh, just going to pan slowly here and give you a view of um, a 
of the channel, channel materials. Well, you got perfect timing. <laughs> There's the contractor. We're looking down the channel here, right about there where the person with the rod is, about the end of our project. It's uh, 190 feet. We are at the uh, railroad culvert. This is the morning of the second day. Uh, the pumps are running. They're going to uh, draw down the stream flow enough to where we dry up the channel and we can start working probably in about an hour and a half from now. Um, standing down here, you can look. Uh, this was a hole about six feet deep uh, yesterday and it was filled with uh, stream bed mix. And um, this morning I am here to inspect it to see if a seal has been uh, established. The contractor was told to uh, put the material in at two foot lifts and to jet it between each lift to where a seal was achieved. I was not here during that time so that's why I am inspecting it now. As I look, I can see this part of the stream has a good seal. The water's flowing on top. It all looks good. However, I'm looking over here, and I can see the water flowing under the lip of the apron. And it's not on the surface where it should be. And I can see over here where the water is coming out seeping out of the ground. That's about, I would say, 12 feet away. There's another spot where it's seeping out. So a seal has not been achieved at this location. This is a problem, and it will have to be repaired before we can move on. So even this material is going to have to be removed and uh, redone, or they're going to have to come in here and spend a lot of time jetting and uh, showing that a seal has been established in this area. This is a view of the outlet of the railroad culvert. Uh, we finished this uh, in-stream work and we've turned the water back into the stream. The water coming through the culvert is about a quarter of an inch deep right now and um, bank full is about um, 19 or 20 inches higher than this. As you can see, the, the channel work that we did here, we rip-wrapped the, the, um, the banks on both sides to prevent uh, more scour into the bank. The size rock that we used, is, the stream bed mix was the same as we used at, uh, at the Spalding site. And uh, gradient here is about 3.8 to uh, the bend and then it's four percent after that. This is a view from inside the culvert uh, looking downstream. As you can see these boulders will uh, function even at Q2 which is about 19 20 inches higher than this flow and it will back up water into the culverts a little bit so uh, that should help. It's March 1st. Um, we're at the downstream culvert, which is the railroad culvert. As you can see, um, the project has been successful. There is no jump into the culvert. The, um, it looks like in the summertime, the juveniles will be able to just swim from the stream into the, uh, into the culvert. And so uh, we have achieved fish passage for both adults and uh, juveniles. When we started this project, there was a vertical bank and we reshaped it to about a three to one slope. Then we removed the Himalayan blackberries and invasive weeds. Uh, it was easiest to do this with uh, the excavator while it was here. We just scraped the bank and uh, we came back in and uh, replanted the site with native trees and shrubs. And uh, we monitor the site for an 80% survival rate. We were one of a group of local participants who raised the money to get the project done. We've also been involved physically in helping to rescue fish here as the project got started and planting trees to replace the ones we had to take out to get the project done. 